He's a real bugger. So, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time it is you're watching this. Hello, welcome to my channel. So this is the Aldi Ferrex Bansal, and I mentioned this in my last vlog video that I bought this. I finally got the chance now to get it out here, to assemble it and give it its first try. Now I'm actually really, really looking forward to getting this out of the box and together. So, let's start the assembly steps. All right, so I've had a look through the instruction manual. I've laid out the parts that I think I need to go with first, which would be the table. I've opened the bag of bolts. I've opened the tools. So we should all be ready now to get ahead and get this assembled. Right, so there we go, there is a bandsaw built and I actually think it looks really good. I'm really liking it. I'm liking the fact that these are metal instead of plastic as I've got on the other one. The table's looking really sturdy. Fence is looking really sturdy as well, which as you know is a problem I had on my old one. So now let's go about setting the blade. Right, so I basically use the Alex Snodgrass technique to set the tension on my bandsaw blades. If you search his name, you'll find loads of videos um, about how to tension your bandsaw blade. And he'll probably explain it way better than I will, but for the sake of this video, I'm gonna show you my take on his technique. Right, so I've left this blade exactly how it came out of the box. I've not put any tension into it yet whatsoever. So let's see what the blade is like before we start. So if I spin the top wheel, you can hear the blades rubbing on something. So it needs a bit more tension. So I can apply the tension up here. I'm just gonna put a bit in just to snug the blade up and it takes that noise out. Now if you watch the blade, you'll see it start to track towards the front of the top wheel and that's because I put the tension into it so it's pulling it forward. So we need to adjust the track in. Now if I adjust the track in in the back here, it tilts this wheel. So I'm trying to tilt it upwards slightly and you should see the blade moving back. Now I want the blade so that the gullet of the blade is in the center of the wheel. So a bite like that is looking right for me on this particular bandsaw. So the reason why you want the deepest part of the gullet in the middle of the wheel is so that all the tension, if you imagine this is your blade, all your tension is on your teeth. So when you come to set your blade up, all the tension is in your teeth and whatever you cut is going to make a straight cut. Then all you need to do is control the back of the blade with the blade guides. 
So once you've done that, you can then move on to checking the tension of the blade. And you check the tension of the blade here as it comes onto the wheel, not as it comes off it where it does the cutting. And you want the deflection here about six mil. Mine's a little over six mil, so I'll just adjust the tension up here. And that's about right. So now you need to check the track in that hasn't thrown out. So the next adjustment is on these side guides. We want to adjust the front and back movement of them so that they sit just behind the deepest part of the gullet of the blade. If they sit too far forward and rub on the teeth of the blade, then it will eventually flatten the teeth, throwing off your cut. Mine unlocks with this bolt, and I need to slide them forward a little bit. Now we can adjust the thrust bearing on the back. It needs to be as close as possible when the blade rotates without touching it. If it's set too far forward, it's going to rub on the blade and cause the blade to drift. So I've got it set now so that it takes a little bit of pressure on the blade to get the thrust bearing to rub and rotate with it. Then it's onto the side adjustment of the side guides. Again you need to move the bearings as close to the blade as possible but without touching it. The idea is to keep the back of the blade from fishtailing as you cut. Mine need to go in a little bit more. Then don't forget you need to repeat all of these steps we've just done on the top guides onto the bottom guides. A quick check of the squareness of the table to the blade and we're ready to make our first cut. Okay, so we've got it all set up now. I'm pretty confident the bearings are in the right positions. So all that's left to do is to give it a try. I've got this uh, big piece of, I don't know, it could be ash. It's an off cut of some sort. So we'll see what type of cut it will do with a, a large rip cut. Okay. Well, that's left a really, really nice cut. I don't know if the camera can quite pick it up. Hardly any bands or rash whatsoever. It's slightly on an angle, but I think that's more to do with the wood than this. So now we should have a, a straight edge on here. Let's try and do an ultra thin veneer cut. Right, so this is as close as I dare go for um, a first try, I don't want the blade damaging the fence, so if I went a little bit closer, then I'd have to make a sacrificial fence up just so it didn't get damaged. But anyway, let's give it a go at this width of cut. Right, so if we measure that bit that I've just cut, wow, it comes out at 0.87 of a mil. That is uh, fantastic. I wouldn't have been able to do that on the park side bandsaw and this one took a bit of time to set it up. And the, the finishes left on it is, is perfect. I'd hardly have to do any sand into that. But the great thing is now, especially with the extra depth of cut, I can make numerous amount of veneers for all sorts of different projects. And that's, that's a really good thing for me. Yeah, really, really happy with this one. Okay, so now we've got the bandsaw all tuned up and working well, I am actually really, really glad that I bought this. This is gonna help me loads now in the workshop. This is a lot more accurate than the Parkside little one that I've got. It just it just seems to be a, a bit of a, an easy machine to set up and of course if it's easier to set up you can get things a lot a lot tighter when you when you set things and get it more accurate now, I, I uh, have written down a few points here so a few good things that I like about it is the tabletop it's really really sturdy um, the whole bandsaw seems to have a nice solid construction and I like the fact the doors are made of metal um, on the parkside little one they're made of plastic 
The rip fence, major improvement, major, major upgrade. And also, whilst using it for the, the brief time I have, I actually think it's a bit quieter than the Parkside one, which is always a bonus. Stops the people next door getting on my back because I'm making too much noise. Uh, the dust extraction, obviously I've not used that yet, so I can't really comment on that, but hopefully that, that'll work well as well. Um, I've got three points here for the things that, you know, I've just found looking at it, maybe a little bit more thought could have gone into it. So the bearings here and underneath are a little bit fiddly to adjust. I think that's a bit of a, an afterthought. They just put them on and then thought, well, we need, we need a way to adjust them. The tilt angle mechanism on the back, uh, that's the only part of this bandsaw that feels a little bit cheap. Uh, again, maybe a little bit of an afterthought, I don't know. I think they could have done something a little bit better there. Maybe you could add like a, a lever to move back and forth rather than um, a wheel or a knob as it is on a on a thin piece of threaded bar. And then the last thing is a bit of a silly one. It's this bottom door. When you open it up, it hits a bolt on the bottom of this table here. Um, <clears throat> All right, it's no major deal. You're going to use the door limited anyway, just to clean it out. And obviously when you change a blade, but you're not going to be opening it as much as this one. You can remove the bolt, it takes 30 seconds, but inevitably you're going to forget, open a door and scratch your nice new paint. It's not what I paid 150 pound to do. But that's everything. All in all, really, really, really happy with this one i'll see if i can dig out a link to this on the aldi website although i think it's disappeared off there now so um might not be able to get hold of it anyway you know the process by now if you like the video give it a like drop me a comment there might be things that i i could do differently that you think i should be doing differently if it's your first time here hit subscribe and as always i will see you in the next one